I make no promises that tonight's show is going to be calm, PG. Oh, fluffy dogs and flowers. Spring cinnamon and daisies. It ain't happening. I'm going to welcome you guys because you deserve it. So, folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, being joined tonight by the man in blue. He's got a special hue, the man they call Derek. Yo, yo, yo. We are here to review AEW Dynamite for April 10th, 2024. I have a lot that I want to say. I'm sure you guys have a lot that you want to say. Um, Derek has made a suggestion as to how we do this show. We will uh, do our best. With all that being said, let's hit the intro, and then we are going to uh, get into this. Hit the like button, if you will. You might get mad at me and take it back. I don't care tonight. And you are going to see how much I don't care. Because tonight, I think I'm going to start telling the truth about stuff. Hopefully, I don't say something that I regret. But I'm going to start telling the truth about a lot of stuff. So, strap in. Put your boots on. And let's go. Derek, how are you today, sir? We are cooling. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Um, hold on, folks. I'm just uh, plugging in here. I'm just plugging in in case I need to hear something, see something, say something. I don't know. I don't know, nor do I care at this point. So <laughs> we're going to talk about Dynamite. I'm going to try and welcome everyone who I see in here. Um, I appreciate, man, mad comments already. Holy guacamole, Batman. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Like I said, hit that like button. Come on in. Leave your thoughts. Um, Derek has made a suggestion. <laughs> Derek thinks that we should skip the the meat and of potatoes. this the meat and potatoes meat of this and potatoes. review and save it for the end if yes. you guys would like that what do we want to say put a one in the chat just put, put a, a quick one if you that's want us to save that for the end because that's where all my energy is about to go and we can run through the show Derek wants to run through the show pretty quickly yes and uh we'll get to that um if you guys got little comments in between we will do that but let me know shout out to my man Dougie Fresh first one in here uh, appreciate you, man. Talk about just had a piece of toast with apple butter on it. What's good, Doug? Nice. Yo, uh, Terrell 317's in the house as well. What's good, Terrell? Appreciate you. Appreciate you, family. Got a lot of stuff here to say. Save all your thoughts, people. B-Boy Skyline in the house. What's good, Jay? Much love. Vinny. Got to take this from Sean, the only Vinny I like. <laughs> Vinny, Vinny BT. What is good? <laughs> Drew McIntyre about to cut the promo of the year on Monday. <laughs> I don't think he really got much to say either. <laughs> Didn't you lose, <laughs> Drew? Didn't you lose? Rob, what's good? He said tonight's going to be epic with the devil face. I I'm sorry. Mike, what's good, man? Appreciate you. Clown, man, I appreciate you. James from uh, the Pro Wrestling Shoot, what's good? Uh, six in the house as well. Man, oh man, oh man. I don't know. Um, Cray's here as well. Um, <laughs> Cray Harsh, bro. Uh, Deanna's in the house as well. What's good? Um, man, man, we're going to talk about it. Quill's in the house as well. Appreciate you, man. Says he's back. Dynamite review. Let's get into it. We will. I promise you. So Quill's. Uh, Matt Lopez is here. Oh, I skipped it. Good evening. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be bad, man. I promise. Uh, Tazzy said it's an EPW party, baby. What's good? What's good, Tazzy? Um, 
your boy Hub back again. Uh, my guy Hubs. Yeah, yeah. Another great episode of Camera Angle to make it seem like a full dynamite featuring pointless, immature, pointless. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it, I promise. Please. Everybody give that one. <laughs> BJ, I feel you, bro. BJ just said, I'm just bleeping sad. I get it, bro. I get it. I get it. I promise you, too. For people who tune out and stuff early, don't tune out tonight. Yeah, no. Don't tune out tonight. E's in the house. What's good, E? McKinney said, yo, I'm here to talk wrestle with the fire live chat and the dynamic duo of Wednesday night EPW to hear what they say about what happened to AEW and to ask Derek to acknowledge Cody. Absolutely not, my great sir. Uh, CM Punk said, I'm here. What did I miss? Phil, you've missed nothing, sir. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, he says, CJ, be easy. Nah, fam. Nah, there ain't going to be no be easy tonight. No, it's time for truth telling to happen tonight for them. Um, yeah, I got to hold my finger over that like button before I hear what's going to be said. Uh, keep it over it. Everyone said one, one run, run through the show, save the major issue for last segment. All right. So it looks like most of the people said one. Let me just make sure punk. Thank you for being in here, man. Appreciate you guys. Jocelyn is in here as well. Was good. Kyra with the quiet storm voice. I uh, actually used to do that a lot with Derek back in the day when we would rap. Yo, what's up, ladies? It's your man, Conrad, here with the quiet storm. You requested Usher. You got it bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to play that right now for you. Give a shout out to your lady. <laughs> Anywho, enough, enough fooling around. Because I already know I'm not about to be happy. Uh, Derek, let's start with the top. We get into AEW. Um, they kicked off the show. They were going to have the world title eliminator match. Swerve jumps Joe during his entrance. Uh, he made reference to someone who's in a lot of legal trouble right now, so we won't mention his name, the D, the I, the D. I won't even finish the rest of it, but I'm sure you know who it is. <sighs> Joe got put through a table. Joe got jacked up, yep. thrown off the stage. Swerve wasn't having it tonight. He Not wanted payback for making him bleed. Last week, like a stuck Irish pig, wasn't going for it, man. I can't believe um, what they did here. Joe went through the table. They take him to the back. Nothing, nothing's going to happen from that right now. Not at all. Highlights of Orange Cassidy and Trent Beretta from last week. Trent Beretta turned on Orange. Orange is going to address this on Rampage. Why? Don't know. I don't know. I guess they're trying to get people to tune into Rampage a little bit here. Uh, I mean, you can't. Here's the thing I always say with Rampage: you can't be mad like, "Oh, Rampage never puts anything interesting on it," and then when they do, who cares? Why would you put it on Rampage? Well, they're trying, right? So, what do you want from them? Right, you asked for it, so now it's there. Don't complain that it's there when you want it somewhere else after that. Yeah. Um. Let's let's move along here. We had the TNT Championship, which is your actual opening match. It is Pentagon challenging Adam Copeland for the TNT Championship. Uh, I thought in the early goings, Pentagon was putting a pretty good beating on Adam Copeland. Absolutely. He was drop kicking uh, your boy right through his chest, D. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. Alex Abrahante said a spear. Penta went for a big move, got caught with the spear. On this day, <laughs> I see clearly. After lights go out, everybody probably thought it was a big debut. Psych, House of Black show up. It's Big Brody and uh, Julia Hart. Who's going to help Copeland? Well, Willow comes out. Um, looks like Julia was gearing up for a miss. She rolled in it, but it didn't really get into her eyes. It was just kind of on the sides of her face. Looks like they're going to set up for a mixed tag match. We find out later on that's exactly what it's going to be. TNT champ versus TBS champ next week on Dynamite. Yes. Whoa, what do you know? Promoting stuff. What do you know? Right. So sound familiar? <laughs> sounds very familiar. Okay. Um, although I real quick, I wanted to see the devil's necktie, and this man was like, nah, bro. Dude, Edge's <laughs> neck is bad. This dude's up here talking about to grab Edge by his neck and hold no, no, no. We don't do that. Give him the devil's necktie right quick. We don't do that over here. You cannot do that. 
Um, after that, we get a, a bunch of segments, and this is where I think we're going to have to reshuffle some things around. Yes. Lion Hook and Shibata are interviewed. Are we, we're past the 10 minute mark? Yo, what the fuck is this Lion Hook bullshit? I'm done with this. So Jericho starts acting all cocky and arrogant, like backstage, where you could tell he's being a jerk. Maybe I missed something because I didn't watch Collision this week. I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck with you guys. I just I watched the FTR match, and I couldn't make it through the rest of it just because I keep getting stopped from watching it. And what is this? It makes no sense. It, it, it looks like we're starting all over again with Jericho taking somebody under the wing to falter again. I, I just don't – I don't understand – why Jericho has to be involved with some of this stuff. This better help Hook in the end. That's all I know. But at the end, I better say, okay, that was good for Hook. It but, better. But I, I, I think we're I think we're struggling with the fact right now. Um that it, it it doesn't it needs to stop. Let's just let's just say that it needs to stop. Right? Um oh gosh, man. I don't know. I don't know. Uh we get the new ROH world champion, Mark Briscoe. He's with Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston seems to be at peace with losing to him. Adam Copeland and Willow show up. This is where we get the challenge to uh, Brody and Julia. <laughs> Yo, best person in this segment, Stokely Hathaway. Stokely Hathaway was like, yeah, and that's why Willow's going to challenge you for the TNT championship. No, I'm not. <laughs> I was just like, what? And then Eddie Kingston's there with them, and he was like, hey, uh, Eddie, I know the last time I saw you, you, I said you smell like Burger King in Newport. I didn't mean that. It, it at least got a laugh out of me. Here. Yeah, it got a laugh out of me. Stokely is pure gold, man. Pure yeah, gold. yeah. Matt Lopez referenced it right there in the chat too, man. Um, they 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 were doing what they had to do for this, so they get through that, and then we'll get to this. Will be us going back to the main event stuff. We'll come back to it. I promise we're gonna talk about it because I'm gonna go off the Will Osprey promo. We get Will Osprey. He's there. He uh, references what Triple H said about him over WrestleMania weekend on Pat McAfee's show. Come on, bro. Oh, I don't want someone who who doesn't want to work and blah, blah, blah. Now, the timing of this probably came off weird because you had just had another shoot kind of thing before it. Right. But he got his little jab in. I, I would have been okay with this with, with it. Here's the thing, man. WWE is making these comments on podcasts, things like that. They're not right. taking the shots on their television. They're using all their TV time because it's valuable. Right. Be careful on how you use the TV time. Am I upset with what happened with Will? No. I mean, like, people disrespect Will Ospreay a little bit sometimes, too, where yeah. I'm like, come on, dog. Come on now. Don't act like you wouldn't want Will Ospreay in your company. Yeah, like, like somebody like that is going, going to sell you or what get you money. It's going to sell out shows for you. Let that like don't don't disrespect like that because we we can say a lot about you and the things that you've done and you'll highly deny it all the time. But you know, right? Uh, Chair relax. What's good, man? I see that you popped in here, man. Um, hold on here. We're getting Conrad. I think Jericho is the only thing in wrestling we one hundred percent disagree on. The only thing I like. Uh, the only thing I like Jericho, brother Conrad. What am I missing, brother Derek? What am I missing? Chris Jericho has leached on to other people when they're like on the rise and then it does nothing for them. Look at the inner circle. Where are all of them now? How did that association with Jericho help them? Yeah. Look at uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society. How did that help any of them? Maybe Garcia, maybe you could make an argument, but. But it, but but you don't really have a strong argument there. But I mean, I don't know. I, I, Jericho is trying to stay relevant because he knows his time is running out, and he can't afford to stay home. Um. So he has to I, he has listen, to do something. And and McKinney brings it up, Conrad. You keep saying Jericho would lock up if he stops wrestling. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, can we do something with Jericho that's just like. He's not with someone that's on the rise and like hot. Like, I'm not saying, oh, don't put with Jericho with someone that's good. Jericho needs people in there who can have good matchups with him. But Jericho is like, he goes from person to person to person to person. And then nothing becomes of that person. 
It's kind of like they they get stalemated in AEW. I'm waiting for the epiphany of like, oh, they became so and so. They became a bigger deal, and I'm not seeing the the value of these Jericho feuds. No, it, it starts out good in the beginning, but then it, it gets to the point where it's like everybody is turning on him because he's he's overzealous in his decision making and wanting to take over all of the time. Stop. Just stop. It doesn't, it's not working. And and Hub said, so you think Jericho's using people uh to a degree. Maybe he has genuine, like he's trying to help them, but it's not working. What 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 is resulting from this? Yeah. Like we just mentioned a lot of names, and can not near one person tell me what who has Jericho really like elevated? Moxley, maybe? Like, you know what I mean? Like you're going back to the beginning days. Jesus De Leon. What's good, Jesus? Uh, appreciate your family. You're late coming here talking about some WrestleMania, too. Right. Mad late. <laughs> um, Osprey cut a decent promo, I thought, once again. Yeah. He built up his match with Danielson. Looking forward to it. Right. I, I, I get the fact that you don't want to take up TV time uh, for stuff like that, but I I, I, I appreciate it because sometimes you, you got you to gotta let people know, like, listen, shut up. He said, did he elevate MJF? Did MJF not already have it though? I was an advocate in the beginning. I said he has it. Yeah, like, M- MJF was elevated a long time ago. Yeah, I I don't think he needed the Jericho thing. I, I think he was elevated way back in the indie set in the sections. Yeah, people. I I always I heard of him and I'm like, dude's a star. As soon as I see him, I'm like, this kid's a star. Money. Um, let's let's jump into this. Julia Hart cut a pretty cool backstage promo. Loved it. Derek was a big fan of it. Um. Shibata and Lion Hook versus Shane Taylor Promotions. Look, I'm glad that Shane Taylor Promotions got a new member, Anthony Agogo. You're doing something with him now. And I thought that they actually made the right choice in this match. Shane Taylor Promotions win because Lion Hook get into it because Jericho's yelling that Hook's not listening to him, whatever this is. Shibata gets beat down in the ring. If I'm Shibata, someone's getting their neck slapped after this. Like, yo, where were you two? Right. He gets dogged, and he is taken out. I think Lee Moriarty penned him, didn't he? Was it Lee? I think so. I thought he had like a downward spiral or something on him. I don't know. Shane Taylor Promotions win. That's good. Show show what you can do with them. They could be a, a force to be reckoned with if you actually tried to build them up. Listen, I, I, t- I told him earlier, like, yo, you can make this a good faction. You can really make this a good faction if you do it correctly. You have three three up and comers that really need to get moving with their career, and this is the way to do it. This is the opportunity to do so. Give make them a faction. Give them something to do. Make them a like you said a force to be reckoned with, and let's rock out with it. Hold on, I'm going back to McKinney. McKinney says Jericho rubs means nothing because it doesn't work right. His feuds take too long to finish. Whose fault is that? That's on Jericho. Remember, he they, those top tier dudes have creative freedom more than most. So right. Jericho is letting the feuds go on too long. It's not the other people. And maybe you could say Tony should stop it. Once again, this goes back to that Cody book and stuff. It ain't Tony's fault that Cody put stipulations on stuff. Right. That's on you, bro. Like you did that. Um, it just depends. What up, Epic Wrestling? Um, going back to it, Kazuchika Okada has a match. Uh, Okada was in here. He went up against Cristantano Argentino, I think is how you say his name. Yes. Or excuse me, I said that wrong. Cristiano Argentino. Yes. Uh, no, uh, Argento. Argento. Yeah. Whatever. Sounds like some damn cheese. Yeah. So this brother, <laughs> we have Argento cheese here. Calm down, people. Right. So. This brother got in the ring. He did like a super soft hit on Okada. Okada rocked him. Rainmaker! <laughs> GG, that was it. Okada gets on the mic afterwards. He calls out Pac and accepts his challenge for Dynasty. Pac comes out. Here comes the Bucks to jump him. And I was like, if I see the Lucha Bros, I'm going to lose my mind. Because I don't want to see any more Young Bucks, Lucha Bros, Pac, Death Triangle. I'm done. Yeah. Stop. They've ruined it after that best of seven. They did. They really ruined that. So they're, he's getting jumped. Out come FTR. FTR, we can mention their promo now. FTR cut a great promo in response. We're going to probably get into that afterwards, I guess. Uh, FTR getting into a fight with them. Okada grabs a chair. 
beat down on them. The EVPs hit them with the double knees, and down they go. They're left laying, and the new elite are walking around like yippity skippity. Bullet Club Gold come backstage. They talk about everything they've done recently from taking out Darby. And Jay White says, find me a challenger for Rampage. Matt Seidel. There you go. Little uh, little quick spoiler alert. Rampage also is going to have Julia Hart versus uh, legit Layla Hirsch happening. So, yeah, things. It's happening. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> Tony Storm is back, and she's going to do a toast to Thunder Rosa. This never even gets started. By the time they pour the champagne, Tony Storm gets her with a cheap shot, then hits her with a tray, and then wipes off her makeup off of her face. Disrespectful to Thunder Rosa. Yes. Deanna Perrazzo comes out. She says, hey, what are you doing? Um, there was an exchange of words. She tries to help her up. They missed the F-bomb completely. Whoever's the censor button guy, you missed it. She said, F you, and walked out. Okay, real heat, though, like made me believe into it a little bit. Yes. Mariah May comes out, and this goes right into the next match with Anna Jay. Um, Anna Jay did some, like, soft chops in the beginning. Yo, Mariah May is fantastic, and I'm here to say that tonight. She is. Mariah May saved the day. I did not mean to rhyme that. But Bars. she she came in, <laughs> and she showed you why she's a great women's wrestler, though. I keep talking about how much appro- improvement the women's roster has had. Mariah May was one of those good people in this. Yes. She she did not get phased by the bad chops. She came in and smacked her even harder. Then it seemed like Anna Jay got with it. They were on it. Uh, flipped over to a neck breaker. She oversells for Anna Jay to make up for it, and it made people forget, like, oh, we just missed a horrible like spot with the chop. Mariah May, true professional. Very. So after that, uh, Mariah May gets the win with a roll-up. Anna Jay attacks immediately after. And uh, Stardom's Mina Shikar... Can I even say this? Sharanqua? Uh, I, I did Mina. So yeah. listen, Mina from Stardom comes out. She is a former tag team partner, Mariah May, for those who don't know. Uh, I think they just did a show. I don't remember if it was GCW or like... Um, one of Joey Janela's shows this WrestleMania weekend. And when they did the show, they did the exact same spot. They get the champagne. She kisses her. Everyone goes, woo. Right. And, and it's craziness. So I don't know what they're going to do, but she makes the big save on Mariah May. So I wonder if this is going to lead to can Tony trust her and things like right. that. So I, I, I think it's a good dynamic to have. Mm. I think it's good. I like it. I like the idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus, inappropriate, sir. He said the kissy was uh, <laughs> saved dynamite for me. Incredible. Um, it was stardom. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was at the stardom show. Thank you. Mm. That was the show it happened at. I've seen so many shows and highlight packages this week. I saw that on uh, social media. Uh, Alex Marvez talks to Mercedes Monet. Please get this man. Off. Yo, Alex Marvez sucks. Sucks. Yo, they turned out the lights, right? House of Black must have attacked her after she basically big ups her opponents. <laughs> Hit him with the line, Derek. Oh my god! I... So, somebody <laughs> what happened? Help. Somebody help! The lights went out. Somebody help! She needs help. Merce- Mercedes Monet needs help. She's down. <laughs> Yo, House of Black, I need you to do the right thing next time. Yo, take that man's <laughs> life. <laughs> Yo, chill. Can't say that. <laughs> TV life. <laughs> Yo, take him out because I don't ever want to hear. That was awful. It His was. delivery was just awful. In Somebody it. get help. We're talking about saving money in this company. You know, while you're bragging about you spent money that would have cost someone salary for the year. How about next time, Tony, you get rid of people who aren't doing a good job instead. I know that's your buddy, but he's got to go. It's not good. It's no. not good at all, bro. No. It's bad. When you have someone like that who can't even sell an attack, get out. You're done, bro. Sorry. Don't act like Mercedes helped this awful, awful promo. It was basic baby face stuff. It was, I'm not going to be like, it was horrid and she was good. Uh. Nah, Rob. I, I can't <laughs> rock with you on this one, bro. Mar- no. Marvez, no, Marvez was, the, was way horrible. worse. Way worse, bro. Way worse way worse dude like yeah that 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 was bad like the, the acting skills like no dude that that's horrible that's horrible 
Oh, thank you, Rob, for the uh, Shira Kawa. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Um, going back to this main event, it is an eliminator match. Dustin Rhodes, Samoa Joe, y'all know what happened early. Dustin's bleeding. <laughs> Dustin's bleeding. And uh, it just gave me memories of the Cody match. Love that match. One of my favorites in AEW history. Maybe one day we'll do a top 10 of those. Ooh, maybe try to make a nice video of it because they have some good matches. They just won't like it. That they, Some of the people won't be there. Um, Dustin sells tonight. Dustin Rose deserves his flowers. I thought me and Derek were giving him a lot of praise in this match. And that's not to take away from Joe. It was just you're thinking about Dustin. Dustin's brother had a big weekend. You're like, man, this dude should have really gotten something too, man. He should have. He should have. He had, he had so many opportunities that weren't given to him that should have been given to him. Yeah, it was it was rough. But Dustin tries to grab to use the belt as a weapon. The referee grabs it, says no, no, he doesn't throw it out the ring. He puts it to the side. And then he hits a big crossroads, only gets a two count. Joe goes to grab that metal chain that Swerve used on him. And the ref stops him and takes it from him, but he grabs the belt that's laying there. Crack out right upside Dustin's head. Dustin is down. He pins him for the three. Afterwards. Swerve comes from out of nowhere. Didn't even hit the music. He goes to choke out Dustin. He hits the house call, the kick right to his head. Thank you for not having music, Swerve. He gets it. Yes. Down Joe goes, and then he grabs the chain, punches him with it, and then he swings it on him, but Joe rolls out. Nana picks up the belt, holds it. Swerve is ready to take it, and then he hits the dance, and we go <laughs> off the air. Um, Derek, before we get into that, would you say this is overall bad dynamite? Good, yay, nay. No, it's a bad dynamite. Bad just because of the one thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that I think the one thing took. Oh, hold on. Rob said we cap it right now. No, Rob, we will argue with you all the way. Nah, Alex, go listen to Alex Marvez's nah. delivery, bro. That was shit. I'm sorry. No. He talked like a regular. Pro- I was like, is he talking to someone? Help! 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 Act like someone's being attacked and the lights just went out. <laughs> Somebody get help. (laughs) Somebody get help. Like, come on. Bro, he sounded like a robot. Yeah. Tazzy said, whose house? Uh, I'm not going back and watch the show. Sounds awful. Listen, everybody's mad, but this is the main event right here. Y'all didn't even get to this part. (sighs) The main event is the thumbnail of the video. The Young Bucks will present backstage footage from All In London and will discuss it for the first time. Why? Why on earth would you do this? Oh, makes no sense. This is awful. Extremely awful. This is it. This is it, bro. I'm pissed. Like... I've tried to stick up for this company as much as I can. Y'all know, go back in the archives of the podcast. You will hear me talk about AEW. And WWE had lost me. Like, the that the ending of Gomez, it was bad, bro. Yeah. I couldn't watch the booking. You're wasting Shinsuke Nakamura, AJ Styles, NXT people who were over and now they're not. And I'm like, how did this happen? Like they were, it was a gift handed to you and you just crumpled it up and dropped it. Like you just threw eggs and you were like, why is it broken? Cause you broke it. Right. Nakamura, Nakamura lost to someone coming up from NXT this week. And I was like, what happened to this dude? Even today, I still wonder like, yo, what could have been? Actually, bro, to, to add on to that, I saw a little graphic. I can't remember what month it was but in all reality to keep it short nakamura is one in 28 rob not disagreeing with you on the mercedes is not the best talker i'm just saying marvez is what offended us the most tonight (laughs) going back to this though i want to get back to this all in this is the, the rest of this is about to be about aew and the problems that i have with a lot of this and you guys can get in on this too Let's see. I'm, I'm about to see if I can find. Go ahead. Do, what are you do, about to find? Do you think? My no. What are you looking up first? No, it, it, was, it was the record for Nakamura. Like it, like say he's won once, 
Oh, Plus. don't even look it up, bro. It's not even. It don't even matter at this point. I know. I'm just saying. It's like, sad. It, it is sad because when I seen him, like, yo, that's ridiculous. Yo, what was the purpose of doing this video tonight, mm. guys? I I have business degrees. I'm letting you guys know that. What is the net positive of running this video? I would hope Tony Khan was smart enough to realize this. I would hope Tony Khan's circle would have been like, yo, T, T, T Kizzle, let me talk to you, player. Yo, this is a bad idea, dog. We're, we're not going to get nothing from this. Not a thing. Why would you do this? You, you know when you could have maybe aired this? When it first happened. You chose not to. And now it's April. This happened in what? Was it, was it August? I think so. Week before Labor Day? I think so. What? What? This happened around Labor Day last year. Oh, let's see. When... when was all in? Like, what? I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. August 27th. Thank you. August 27th of last year. You're like, ah, let's air it in April. Because CM Punk went on Ariel Hawani and said stuff. He got asked questions. CM Punk didn't randomly bring this up, people. And before any defenders come in, I know CM Punk shouldn't put his hands on anybody. But here's what you got to accept. This is the reality of situations. When you walk down the street, you don't talk shit to people and be like, well, you shouldn't put your hands on anybody because guess what? You don't know that person. You don't know me. You don't know him. He might put his hands on you. You don't know him. Maybe we're nice guys and we won't. But there are people out there who are going to be like, hey, yo, I'm not with your pranks. I'm not with your games, dog. Get out my face. I have told you once before. And once you start hearing that stuff or you start seeing people clap their hands, there are signs. You better stop. Yes. This video footage that got shown. So let me clear this up. The Young Bucks are trying to use this to build their feud with FTR. This sucks. This sucks. This has nothing to do with FTR. This is pure and utter garbage. Right. Garbage, Tony Khan, and it's unacceptable at this point. You look ridiculous doing stuff like this. Media, call him out for this. This was dumb. And I saw people, oh, this isn't how Punk first reported it happened. Ask me how stuff happened with fights if I was there live. The stories are going to be different from five different people. You know why? Adrenaline is high. You don't remember all that stuff. But you know what it looked like tonight? I retweeted Ariel Hawani's video. You know why? Because it looks exactly like Punk described it. It looked exactly like it. He goes up to Jungle Boy and he says, what is this, bro? Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. They sat there. They talked for like 30 seconds to a minute. Yeah. And then that's when it went down. Punk pushed him. Yes, Punk shouldn't have pushed him. Okay. Oh, he's the veteran. He should know better. Stop with that. Older people should know better shit. He might put his hands on you once again. You don't fucking know him. You don't know this man. Who is messaging me when I'm recording this? Bro, honestly, if you really think about it, older people are going to, uh, older <laughs> vets are the ones who are actually going to put your hands on, put their hands on you. Dog. Don't touch me. Dog, I don't get it, Tony. Tony, I have supported your brand from day one. I was supporting this when I heard it was a rumor. I support your video game. By the way, go get the Jamie Hayter DLC. Still supporting your stuff. But this shit cannot go on, and you expect me to keep supporting it. This is fucking trash. I'm sorry to say it. You did this. What did you get from this? The people were chanting CM Punk in the arena. I'm a punk fan like anyone else. That doesn't help. It doesn't help. You know what you got right now? You got a women's roster. You just got Mercedes Monet. How about you work on promoting them? That would be a good thing, right? How about you also work on promoting Swerve, who might be your first black AEW world champion? Instead, you want to spend your time on petty bullshit like this. It's stupid that you do this stuff. It's ridiculous that you do this stuff. Do I like AEW? Yes. AEW is something that I want to support. WrestleMania 40 wouldn't have been as good this weekend without AEW. The Rock Final Boss may not happen without AEW. Triple H getting all, I'm so mad that NXT didn't work out because of AEW. Do you know what else has happened because of this? 
Triple H has realized that you guys were doing the NXT formula that he created, and he realized I could do it better. And that's what he did. He's mad that you took his people, and he's trying to get his people back. And that's it. He's like, please give me another chance. I got this now. I'm in full control. I got it. Right. We'll see. Right. I'm kicking it to you for a second because I I'll go off. So you know, um, so p- people like to say, you know, you, you got to be professional. You got to be professional. This is your job. This is your livelihood. That's exactly what this is. This is your job. This is your livelihood. Think about what you're saying. This is your job. This is your livelihood. Okay. So now let's put your let's put you in the same type of situation and let's see what you're going to do. Because at the end of the day, if you are trying to fuck with my money, I am going to put my hands on you. top guy money. Top, top guy, guy money. money. You got you got someone who's on the pre-show messing with your top guy. And here's the sad part, Derek. Here's the sad part from the footage if you stare at it long enough. Did you see all those people standing around? They did not care about the conversation. Joe was right there. Chris Hero was back there. And I'm not putting blame on any of them. You don't have to step in and stop a fight. No. But someone didn't see these two go face-to-face and went, that might be a problem. Right. Right. You didn't think when Jack Perry was disrespecting Billy Gunn that there was going to be a problem with this type of stuff? Tony Khan is sitting right there. Right there. Why didn't you step in front? During the pre-show, you couldn't have handed off the headset to someone. There's not another person but Tony Khan who could talk to people. Tony Khan, and I believe CM Punk told him. I believe CM Punk told him, you better fix this or I'm going to fix it. And that's when he went up to him and said, I got a problem with you. You know what I mean? Like, he went up and was like, what's up, man? Like, what's the deal with that? Why didn't Tony do anything? And for all, okay, it's about to get bad here. And for all the talk, oh, I was scared for my life. Tony Khan, in this situation, if that's all that happened with the video monitors, you're a bitch, bro. That is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. What are you scared of? Oh, he lunged at me. Oh, you better you better step up in his face. And say, I'm your boss, bro. You better sit down and chill out. But no, that's not what you did. And then after the match happens with Samoa Joe, CM Punk's backstage taking photos. It's unicorns and sunshine backstage. Yeah. What was the issue? It was because your EVPs were immature. And now you want to show this stuff now. And if the EVPs really want to know parts of this, you better say so. Because tonight, this could be bad. If you're a CM Punk fan, I can see most people say, I'm not going to watch this anymore. I can see it. It makes perfect sense. I can definitely see it. Uh, You know, for the EVPs, man, man, get get out. Go. Stop wrestling. Stop putting putting your hand in, in the pot. Trying to stir things up, trying to get sympathy for what you no, did. No, you should have fucking worked with the dude before you did this stupid ass gimmick. This should have been what you did when he was there. You could have made money. And instead, now let's do it with FTR. This don't make no money, bro. And then didn't you want to place the blame on FTR like like this is a thing? Like, F- it's their fault. Yo, and I'll say this: Cash and them did try to cut a great promo to make sense of this. I'll give it up to them for that, that they tried, but People are fuming because of this. And they're friends with CM Punk. Why would you put them in some awkward-ass position like that? Right. Why would you do that with people's friendship? Listen, I promise you, I would not be surprised if FTR lay in a couple real thick shots because of what you said. And it's something that you deserve. Well, if if it's up to them, it might have just been a Tony call. Terrell said, why is it bad? Because it confirms CM Punk is the bad guy. Maybe Hangman Page shouldn't have did what he did. Maybe Tony shouldn't have separated the rosters. Terrell, when's Tony Khan going to eat some of this blame? When's the elite going to eat some of the blame? All I ever hear is the CM Punk drama, the CM Punk story. No, there are multiple people in this story that are part of the problem. Yes, Punk was too. Punk shouldn't have put his hands on people. But I don't hear enough, what did the Bucks do at Brawl In? Or Brawl Out, excuse me. What did Jack Perry do at Brawl In? Who started that shit? Did they send a minion after him? You know half the company is friends with them. They got them hired. So you don't think that, oh, well, I'm not going to go on collision. Oh, Tony promised me separate rosters. 
No wonder why some of the people weren't supposed to be there. And why was CM Punk hired as a consultant then if you weren't going to listen to him? Uh, what, what, my question is, would this, would this have been different if, if, uh, if Billy Gunn and uh, Jungle Boy got into it? Would this have been different? <laughs> Hell yeah, it would have been different. I mean, how how different would it would have been? I mean, well, okay. You saw them Billy Gun jabs. Billy Gun coming in there, he might knock you out. Uh, that's true. But but this this wouldn't have this wouldn't have the the uh, the height that it has. This wouldn't have the weight that it has right now. No, Lara brought up the same points you did. Yeah, Tony Schiavone. How was Tony Schiavone's face afterwards, Derek? Because you and BJ were the two who told me. Tony Schiavone looked like this was WCW 2000, bro. All over again. He was embarrassed. This was not important at all. Let it go. This is August of last year. We're in April now. Who cares? And Tony knew because he grabbed Punk. Once again, Tony Khan didn't do the right thing. He had to get Punk to tell, tell Jack he's cussing out everybody. He, he wants to do a spot with glass, blah, blah, blah. And Punk was like, why, why is it me, man? And he went back there and he told them, where was Tony Khan? First of all, the, the moment Jack Perry said he wanted to use real glass, Tony, where were you at? Like, yo, bro, no, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. If you want to do that, you can go on the, on the actual indie shows and go do that stupid crap. We're not doing that here. And Cray brings up a good point. Draymond Green punched a teammate. He's still on the Warriors. I don't hear anybody crying when someone gets potatoed in the ring. Oh, I guess it's fair when it's in the ring, but when it's not in the ring, it's the same shit, bro. It's the exact same thing. It is. And guess what? When you're on sports teams, people fight. A hard foul can lead to some angry feelings. And people, listen, we I've gotten into it with people on basketball teams and stuff, and then later on we became friends. Like, yo, we're cool, bro. You know what I mean? Stuff like that happens. Um, Hey, now we know why they call them Bucks, because they stay right and CM Punk. Hey. Hey, man. Uh, appreciate it, man. They got viewers tonight, man. I appreciate everybody who's popping in on here, man. Uh, thank you, man. Uh, that's what they accomplished, but just for tonight. Wh where's the long-term? Where's the long-term thinking for this? There is none. Did you just help Raw? Raw just got 3 million people watching. I don't know what you're doing. And this is just business analytics talking, but I'm sorry. At, 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 I, I don't care what anybody says. At the end of the day, if I'm making top tier money, and I'm and I'm only I'm only here to consult. I, like I'm here to wrestle, but I'm consulting too. If I'm making top tier money, and I tell you that's not a good idea, and you take it wrong, okay, fine, take it wrong with it. But I told you this is not a good idea. And in the same token of breath, if you keep pushing the buttons, and you keep messing with my money. And my family, because that's essentially what's happening. You're taking money away from me and my family. I'm going to put hands on you. I'm sorry. I don't care what you think. I don't care how you feel. Hands are going to be put on you because you're taking away from my family. McKinney says it right here. The sign uh, told uh, CM Punk told TK handle it. And his response was, what do you want me to do? Punk said, if I handle it, you're not going to like how I handle it. Sign that I'm going to beat his ass. That's what happens. I need y'all to learn the code. People usually give you signs and warnings before it's about to happen. All right? I don't I don't agree with a full-blown snuff ever unless you know what's coming. But come on, dog. You got to know. He was basically telling you, like, yo, I'm Listen, going to choke this dude. You, you've been warned, Tony, and you didn't heed, you didn't heed the warning. But you, as a boss, should have stood up and said, hey, I need both of y'all to just back up. Not right even. Now. I would have said, Jack, come sit right next to me real quick. I need to talk to you. Jack, get out the arena. You're done for the rest of the night. Why did you say that shit? This is the biggest night of our pay-per-view, and you go and pull some shit like that? Get out. I'll talk to you on Wednesday. You know what I mean? Or I'll talk to you at the hotel later. Whatever. Young Buck should be arrested. Short. I wouldn't go that far. They didn't do nothing wrong. Just, uh, just foolishness. Um... Uh, I hope TK realizes it was stupid to worry about this show. Chris Hero's face was priceless. Uh, <laughs> Jay Relax said, F around and find out. <laughs> I smell kitty cat. Is that you, Tony Khan? Yes. <laughs> I can't. Uh, they stopped the comments on their social media. I bet they did. I bet they did. 
all this proves are the Young Bucks are becoming NWO 2.0 and can't control their egos. Might be time to get some creative writers or let someone else help you book, Tony. Just saying. FTR's promo was weak and, and not at the fault of their own. They were given crap. I thought they did well for what they were given, though, Sean. That's what I was saying. Um, I'm just looking through. <laughs> Here comes this guy tonight. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Jesse, I'm going to put your link in there just because you're funny. Just because you were funny right there. Big shout out to the Pro Wrestling Shoot. I'm going to put Hub's link in the chat as well, man. Sh- subscribe to uh, Sean Hubbard, partner for Clash of the Podcast, every Monday live at 6.05. Uh, the way you brothers explained it, people might stop watching just on the fact of the immaturity and lack of accountability from the EVPs and the owner who's not a boss. Mass exodus. Bro, when Ricky Starks is at WrestleMania showing more energy than he's ever shown on Collision, I don't know what you want me to tell you, bro. That brother's unhappy. You're not doing something right. Listen, you saw Ricky Starks. You saw uh, Dustin Dustin Rose. That like, it's it's all within it's all within it's all within the plans right now. Look right there, pro wrestler shoot. I just was showing some love. I'll listen later. I'm disappointed. I'm over it. I'm done with this trash. This company lost a fan in me. I stand with CM Punk. Period. E says like the vid. Thank you, E. And E also put up our socials. Thank you, good sir. I appreciate it. They got viewers and have WCW 2000 still trending on X. Yep. This is some WCW crap. I told everybody. Remember Bischoff challenging Vince like Vince was going to show up to a fight? What was the payoff going to be? Eric Bischoff getting beat up? I don't get it. Or you end up like Jordan Poole. (laughs) Yo, chill. Don't be surprised if Tony Schiavone goes to WWE by the end of the year. I don't think he'll do that, no, Lara. I think he'll, uh, he'll go crazy before that happens. Uh, Punk put Perry in a headlock like he was Punk's annoying little stepbrother. Punk could have probably really jacked him up on the real. Yeah, and yeah. I'm not saying Punk's like some elite MMA fighter either, but Punk, listen. If yeah, you you're don't lucky look, that's all he did. Yeah. Yeah. He could have started swinging instead. Again, but, let, let this let this have been Billy Gunn. Billy Gunn probably would have annihilated uh, him. Yeah, he would have broke him in half. Yeah. Um, Eric Bischoff over Tony. Pump the brakes now. Pump the brakes. I just I, want. I don't know, bro. I, I want after to, this. I want Tony to learn, bro. I Tony, want Tony. Tony's not going to learn because he's got two jackasses running the show for him. They got. They gotta. They gotta get a grip on this. They have to. I'm disappointed, and like I said, I'm a longtime fan. Y'all know, bro. I got the AEW merch. I've went to a bunch of shows. I was out there, man. I was at the show, the the last show before the pandemic hit. I was supposed to go to it. I kept those tickets. I never asked for my money back because I wanted to go so badly. And now here we are. We got people who want to trash talk CM Punk. And we, we're, we're talking about Punk. Is he still your biggest draw or not? Focus on Swerve, like I said. Focus on Mercedes. Focus on Okada. Focus on Osprey. Focus on Joe. Focus on whoever. Focus on Ricky Starks. He's at WrestleMania, and I'm yelling betrayal anytime I see co-mingling of people and companies, especially AEW side. Betrayal. Because that's what they said to Punk. You betrayed me by going to a show and sitting backstage. He's a wrestler. He has friends. Right. (laughs) Come on, man. Come on, man. Give CM Punk the world title. I said it. Uh, okay, I can't lie, I may be wrong, but Ricky Starks was being a punk at WrestleMania England for a job. No, I don't know that. I don't know that. I don't know if Ricky was angling for a job. I think Ricky's out though. Oh, yeah, Rick, Ricky's Rick, Ricky's gone. Um, at least Eric protected Hogan. He still protects. Don't I don't want to even get into Bischoff, bro. I really don't because he'll make me mad. Joel, what's good, brother? I see the two sweet. Dynasty, don't forget you can get the pay-per-view. I forgot to shill a little bit more. Um, are we yelling still about anything? Are we good? I'm good now, I think. I'm done. I, I have a little bead of sweat. I'm good, though. Don't forget that you guys can get AEW Dynasty. It's going to be on Triller TV. I'm happy for it. I'm getting it on Triller. I think you guys should as well. Yes. Um, They've got Will Ospreay, Brian Danielson announced we have a tag title match between the Young Bucks and FTR. That's what all this video footage was for. Hold on so you guys can see me. Yippee! Good job, guys. Good job. Way to piss off anybody who likes CM Punk. Smart. 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 Chase more people away. Stupid. 
We also have Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black. Cool. Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale for the TBS Championship. It sounds like Mercedes Monet won't be wrestling until double or nothing. So we have to wait until Sunday, May 26th before that even happens. So it sounds like she's not cleared yet. In the main event, people who I said you should be focused on, Samoa Joe and Swerve Strickland. Bro, I feel like this is going to, this whole situation has already overshadowed this. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, like you heard, you heard a couple of times, like whose house? By Jamie Hader's DLC. <laughs> right. Like you heard. Support Jamie Hader. <laughs> you heard who's, you know, whose house a couple of times, but it, it had no real effect. Like it should have. I, I think that because you're not focused on it, you're focused yeah. on other. When your mind was all about the video, the video, the video, the video. That's all people talked about today was the video. Yeah, the the moment you guys said it, that's what everybody was thinking about. The oh, day that you said it. Oh, if you're watching Collision this week, we have an international championship eliminator match on Battle of the Belts ten. Even though it's a Battle of the Belts, we have an eliminator match. What? Yo. Yo. Don't do these shows if you're not going to put titles on the line, dog. What is this? I'm, I'm not saying Rocky and uh, and Roderick are going to deliver a bad match, but come on, dog. Yeah. And BJ, I'm so glad you brought that up. Let me go back to this. Like I said, support Triller TV. I think it's a better uh, app than BR Live. This is me being 100, like keeping it a buck with you. I'm, I'm watching on there from now on, and I hope they get all the pay-per-views going forward, like truthfully. Um, joke ditch line hook. Thank goodness. Tony will retire before he goes back to WWE. I agree, Mike. WCW 2000 is alive and well. BJ said, though, how does Adam Copeland feel right now? Remember that speech last week, Derek, about positivity? You made Adam Copeland look like a fool because you brought up negativity this week. Yes, to just tear down punk because you're mad about an interview. We're you're the negative one. We're supposed to be focusing on wrestling, wrestling, but we're focused on. Foolery. <laughs> Six said, times like this makes me wonder, what's Hardcore Holly doing? Do you? <laughs> Do you? Listen, times like this makes me miss the mat, uh, the attitude error when they come in and just like, yo, shut up. <laughs> T- yo, you got to chill with that, though. <laughs> they, they, they were wild back then. <laughs> we don't play video games. <laughs> uh, Tazzy said, Tony Khan just made CM Punk more over than he already is. That is a fact, my brother. That is a fact. Punk was the biggest draw. People don't want to appreciate it. Tony Storm versus uh, AZM this Saturday. Ooh, that might be a good match. AZM is really dope from stardom. If you haven't seen, uh, go check out her work. Uh, do a YouTube search. Who is she? <laughs> I'm telling you, go check out some stardom matches. They're good. Uh, what makes me mad is that AEW has an amazing roster. Why are they focusing on bull crap like we saw tonight? It's ridiculous. Rob says, I want to see how Tony would do booking uh, company 2024. With the equivalent of Paul Heyman's TNN budget, get them creative juices flowing. You got to man. He's got to hire some people to help him. He needs help. They, this company needs structure. That's the biggest issue. The word that I kept saying on Clash of the Podcast, the C word, bro. Communication is the biggest issue within this company. You don't tell people when they're fired. People don't know what's up with their flights. Even though I, I still think the boy should have known what the hell to do. Like he should have showed up to the show and then had a conversation. They didn't want to drive three hours to Nashville. Or whatever. I don't know, whatever that was. You got to communicate with people. You need someone to be the guy who is going to drop the hammer if you don't, Tony. I know you're not a, a, a dominant personality like Gomez. You don't have to be. And I'm tired of telling people this. He doesn't have to be. He can have someone do it. You just have to say, yo, like, Derek, I'm bringing you in. And I need you to fire people for me. I need you to tell them, like, yo, you're getting disciplined for this, this, and this. You got to go. Get out the building tonight. That's it. Brian Danielson should not be handing out fines. The wrestler should not be having to help you. You should be giving these jobs to wrestlers of the past and letting them do it. Or you get executives who have done great stuff. You just hired a COO. All right? Use those people. Use them for their strengths. You don't have to do everything, Tony. Just do the jobs you want then. Right. But you have to be a boss. And, you and, have to. And just to reiterate on what you said, like communication is key. And I heard something on, on Instagram before where 
I was just scrolling and someone had said, I can't remember who said it. So shout out to you. I forgot your name, but the, the man in short, the man said, basically communication means nothing. If you can't comprehend the communication, if you can't comprehend the conversation, communication doesn't mean anything. Look at you. I'm out here with a little, little wordsmith. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Like you have to, you have to comprehend what what's going on. The fact that you didn't comprehend what was being told to you for this whole situation, you didn't. It was communicated to you. You just didn't comprehend it. Rob said Ricky was just happy for his boy Cody gave him a platform. Platform that joined on AEW, bro. I want to see. I want to see Ricky Starks do something. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm yelling at Tony. Like, this dude had something. When he was going up against MJF, we were with it. The one time Punk didn't have a Bret Hart hoodie on. <laughs> Chill, e. Mike Straw says he has a Fight Forever exclusive this week. Ooh. Let's see what that is. Matt Hardy's still a free agent. Yawn. Um, and I, yo, Derek will tell you, I was the biggest Matt Hardy fan back in the day. I don't care anymore. I'm done with them. Like, you had your chance. Jeff blew it. Yep. Uh, DJ B Tazzy said he will be doing a watch along for Dynasty. If you guys are looking to watch along, uh, I think we're gonna review it on Clash. Me and Sean, John G, what's good, man? Appreciate you. I'm gonna say it, Paul White, run and leave the company. Big show for next year's Hall of Fame. Chill out, chill out. I'm sure he'll get in there one day, though. Shenanigans, Deanna said Tony is mad because he lets CM Punk go and he draws money. That's on him. True, yeah. but he he still shouldn't have let the Bucks do that though. Yeah, or they shouldn't be in the position of power still. No, William Berg, what's good? What's good? AZM versus Stephanie Vicker this Friday at Windy City Riot. I got the graphics up for Windy City Riot. I'm actually looking forward to this show. Naito versus Mox. I'm putting the belt on Moxley, bro. I'm not even gonna front. Yeah. New Japan needs a, a lift right now, but this card looks pretty uh, tremendous right here. So I'm glad that you brought it up. It looks like there's going to be a team match here with uh, Kingston and and the homies versus uh, Bullet Club. They're they're gonna they, they got some fun stuff on here. I would recommend checking out Go Shota Amino versus Jack Perry. By the way, all this stuff for Jack Perry, nobody's gonna care. Nope, nobody's gonna care. I hope he gets dusted. <laughs> I, Derek, you uh, heard the legendary DJ Mr. C pass? I, I saw that, yes. Uh, someone said R.I.P. Aki Bono. Hmm? I, I don't know if you mean Aki Bono. Um, Shivani was having war flashbacks from WCW days, yeah. Basically, are you hearing me or are you listening, Clown said, what you were saying before. Yeah. That's it. What are your guys' thoughts on what Mark Henry said about Kyrie saying disrespecting the wrestling business? I saw that. Did you see? You didn't see what he said. Mm -hmm. Kyrie saying didn't get out the ring during it. I think um, Mark Henry should have maybe kept that one and had the conversation with Kyrie saying. I don't want to get too deep into it. Um, I don't know what's expected when you're in the ring like that, so. I can't say too much, but I wish Mark Henry would have had a private conversation with her. Um, let me see. Shane Taylor versus uh, Hook for the FTW title of Battle of the Belts. Aki Bono did die. Yes, true. Oh, man, that sucks. Aki Bono, Taro Pass. RIP, man. Mm -hmm. I thought Mark was uh, reaching hard, but I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, he faced... Uh, Big show at WrestleMania 20. Yes, I remember that. Or was it 21? I'm sorry. 21. Because John Cena faced Big Show at 20. I don't know what else to say, guys, but. Not much else you could say. Not much else you could say. Me and Derek are trying to hang in there. Tony Khan, please, 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 please get it together for us. Please, that, that that that's that's all we ask, dude. Just just show that you're different. Show that you're gonna try. All right, that's all I can say, man. I don't I don't know what else to say with this. I'm I'm done. I'm tired, and uh, I'm about to go watch X Men '97. Yes. So something to uh, something to bring up the spirits. Since they were brought down early on. 
do something. <laughs> do something. Get us back to where we were enjoying this product. Focus on your product. There's no reason not to now. All right? Punk's gone. Focus on who you have. I don't know if I'll ever care about some of these people now because their true colors have shown, but it's what it is. Yo, shout out to everybody who was in here. Hit the like button, subscribe. Leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. Subscribe to the channel so you can listen to me and Sean Hubbard. Hubbard Wrestle Weekly for Clash of the Podcast live this Monday, 6.05 Eastern Standard Time. For myself and the man they call Derek, we are out for this episode of Everything Pro Wrestling. Telling you, Dynamite, Tony Khan, and Elite. Be better and think about your fans before you make decisions like this ever again. Right. We are out. One.